Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. Wednesday, and what a day we have planned for you today. What a show. It's going to be great. Fantastic show. <laughs> I know I've been pushing you guys for different things. You know, I'm, I'm like an enabler, you know. I'll give you your first turn on the lathe for free, but after that, you'll be coming back to me saying, I need more time. I need more time. A uh, couple things to talk about today. I actually need your help with a uh, an issue I have. You see over here, look down, you see that? the uh, Doing some golf ball uh, screwdrivers. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, I, I ran into a little bit of an issue. I thought we would discuss that first. Um, I have some good news for the show. Some very generous people sent some things in for us. And uh, just an all-around good show. Let's get started right away. Okay, we're on our way to our 30 screwdrivers and third days, but there's a little disclaimer we have. And the first thing, I, I know it, we all said that this is a wonky-looking screwdriver, but I have a couple things to tell you. First of all, I sent one of the prototypes out to a tool reviewer. Scott's Tool Thoughts on YouTube. Guy is an expert when it comes to tools. I, I've been following him for a long time anyway. Uh, he's going to be putting it through the paces and whatnot. Uh, he's a big fan of ball screwdrivers. He actually did videos on, but he's going to be putting this one through and he's going to give me a report on it. Secondly, my good buddy Hester781, who, uh, who's a fantastic guy. And you know, you can always tell a guy when you're watching his videos, how he handles tools. If this guy is the real deal and Hester is the real deal. You can watch the way he handles tools. This guy is good. So he knocked one out he made one out of delrin and uh, and a golf ball and here's what it looks like beautiful right he did a great job and so he get it he says i love it he says it just fits in the hand so good and he's been using tools for many many years so he gives it to his father his father says the same thing he says holy cow i want so one. i promise you this is not hype this is not something i'm just saying when you feel this in your hand it'll change your mind in fact i'm going to bring a couple to the long island tool meet because i want to get some more expert opinions and here's what i'm up to now is trying to get the the specifics correct you know like you see we made this one out of aluminum but and this is very close to the one i like but you see the thickness here and the length that you know this one here was a longer one remember i said i would have liked it a little shorter you know it was the first one i made so this one it would be kind of not a fail but i mean it's just not for my help you had really long fingers <laughs> so he, let me tell you the problem i have and what i would hope you can help me out with you see the look at the clarity you see here of uh of where the epoxy remember this is all epoxy the whole shaft now I've been epoxying acrylics for a long time. Now, this we had a little acetone, was given a little bit of a craze, and craze is when plastic gets a little funky. But look at the last batch I did over here. Let me show you what happened to the shafts. I, I don't know. Something's okay, up. Okay, so now I bought this orange acrylic a while back at the flea market. So I, the origins, I have no idea. I don't know actually what the material is. Acrylic, acetate, lucite, plexiglass. I have no idea. But what I do know is that it, it was clear, you know, amber colored. And I bought it to actually make light bulb housings. But whatever the case may be. But look what happened now when I, I, I glued. Look at the crazing that's going on. And this crazing is different. You see, it goes all the way, but there's no feel of it outside, but it, it totally crazed the entire, look at this one here. You know, here's the, uh, look at this, how it crazed it. Now, I, I know I've been using DevCon clear epoxy for many years on, on plastics. I've had a problem. I know my buddy, Jim, not too fast for you to see. Uh, he's been using uh, acrylics for years and epoxy never had this kind of, what is that? What is that? Does anybody know? And th the only difference between this prototype and the other ones is that I made the, if you notice here, the tip, you know, where the screwdriver comes out, it's real tight. It's almost like a press fit in there. And so there's less area inside for it to um, maybe expand. You know what I mean? Because it's so tight now. Maybe it's off gassing and that's what's creating it. I don't know. If anybody here has an idea of ever seen that, before I try some of the other acrylics, I got the before nice. Before I start color. messing with these, I want to make sure that I'm I got that down pat. So I would appreciate any thoughts that you might have, any any experiences you might have with any kind of crazing and acrylic, or if you used a different kind of epoxy or glue. Another thing I want to introduce you to is the uh, upcoming Captain America screwdriver that will be made from this i know you guys are getting excited right now because i know i am 
Now, for those of you who've tuned into my channel before, you know I'm I'm quite patriotic. I, um, I guess I'm very patriotic. You would call it. I love this country, and I, uh, I love patriotism for every country. If you, whatever country you live in, I respect people that are patriotic towards their own country. But I happen to be born and raised here, and I just love the colors, the flag, the whole thing. But what I really like is that uh, when we do our, our our little challenges around Fourth of July and do a patriotic tool, because you know, it's, it got my buddy John Fix started in, in making videos and restoring tools, and that really means a lot to me. It all started- With this nice 603 Hargrave clamp. I love these clamps with the holes in it. And we did this in a red, white, and blue one year, and and, uh, and we came up with the challenge not for after. This is just a lovely clamp. And you know what's funny? They're pretty rare. These are called body clamps, and you don't, you don't find them too often, but you know who's got a stash of these? Joe Shop. His his grandfather had a stash. So Joe Shop has like one of the few remaining hordes in the country. <laughs> so anyway, then we went to this one. This was a another one. Here's another nice clamp, huh? Look at that. I mean, that's just I love that thing. So uh, you know, we the patriotic tools I've always loved. So them. we're gonna be knocking out the Captain America screwdrivers. I'm gonna have to make them in aluminum, aluminium for you guys overseas, because uh, you gotta have the silver with the flag. It just looks so cool. It's like that Captain America chopper. You ever see that? Man, that's that's like the hardtail chopper from Easy Rider. That was such a cool bike. Okay, next up, you remember a couple weeks ago, some good friends of the show, Jimmy and Lisa Campanella. They sent in a bunch of uh, tools. It was really a uh, wonderful thing. And also, Jimmy sent me those split screwdrivers. So, but uh, the tools apparently belong to Richard Benedict, and they were, that was Lisa's father, uh, Jimmy's father-in-law. The guy was a tool guy, and you know, I wish I could have met him because we have a lot in common. I could tell by his choice of tools, but uh, she sent, a, a, a Lisa and Jimmy sent this box of tools over because they said they wanted to see it go to somebody that would like it, and and so here's what we're going to do. Let me show you. Check out what they sent, okay? Now, all this belonged to Richard, and uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to give away a lot of this stuff because that's what they said. They would like to see go to tool people. But um, I want to talk about the NOS stuff and things like that. You know, the tools that I like that <laughs> I'm going to hold on to dearly but uh, there are some things here like automotive things and, and and whatnot that I won't use and and they want to see it go to somebody because they're fans of the channel let me show you some of the interesting things and but we'll go through this in in the upcoming weeks we'll pick something and talk now about Richard it. had a lot of NOS stuff and and cool thing look at these look at these huh you know what a fan I am of these so uh they he has so many this is all like new old stock stuff and just interesting things that we're going to be talking about go through the history uh some cool body files things like that what we are going to talk about nos hand vices when was the last time you seen one of those uh new old stock craftsman screwdriver the spring type just cool stuff but look at this we're talking about ball drive. <laughs> does this look familiar does this look familiar I'm telling you, Richie's got to be laughing right now. If he's looking down on us, he's probably saying, son of a gun, my golf ball screwdriver. Here's another one. This is a little wonder from Easy Driver. Scott has one of these uh, from Scott's Tool Thought. So we'll go through it. Just I'm just giving you a teaser. Amazing stuff, all kinds of stuff. Lots of cool things to talk about in the upcoming weeks. Jimmy and Lisa, thanks so much. It's going to be a great tribute to Richard Benedict. Okay, the first thing I'd like to talk about uh, that Lisa and Jimmy sent over from Richard's collection is this Viper Grip. Now, I have never seen these type of pliers before. Maybe you have. Um, it's a laminated plier. It's it's interesting. I like gimmicky tools, and this is what this is, but this is a higher quality. You could see here, uh, if I can focus in, where it is... Uh, uh, I can't really read it right now because I don't have my reading glasses on, but you could see the information here. And uh, what's interesting about this is it's both a pliers and a locking pliers. Let me show you how it works. If you wanted to use it as a regular pliers, you see over here there's a selector switch. You see it says plier over here and this is locking. So you would just move this over. You just tilt and move. So that goes up to plier. Now you could grip this or grip whatever you have to and you could, you know, it won't lock or anything. Now, if you wanted to use it for a locking plier, you just pull this out to this side, and then when you squeeze down on something, 
it locks and it's in there. That's solid, okay? And you could adjust the, the force like a regular vice grip here. To release it, you just pull this back and it releases. So very interesting, very cool. Never seen it. Anybody else there out there have ever you ever seen it? It looks like a high quality, decent tool, by the way. It's uh you see it's WWWLDL tools. Is that correct? Am I or is it IDL? IDL tools. So I have to look that up. Very interesting. So that's number one. Next up is cool. something we don't usually see too often. And this one's pretty old, and you could tell it's pretty old because it has no barcode on it. So it's gotta be, you know, 30 something years old. And the price at 28269. You know, that's pretty inexpensive. It is a general in the box hand vise, number 815. Let's take a look at it. These were, here we go, very similar. And you can see this is what's called surface. Remember we're talking about shelfware? <laughs> that's shelfware. And here's shelfware, but you can see it's a new old stock piece, a beautiful, uh, Beautiful little hand vise here. You see how these work? These do come in very handy. The drawers are very... General made good tools. Very interesting, right? We've never seen one of these before. A new old stock in the box. Very interesting. And last up for today's uh, discussion on Richard's tools is... Uh, look at this. This is a... You know, I love pry bars and crowbars. And Okay, look here. We have... Uh, what is this? A hex stock? Hex stock... Okay, it's bent into this, and it's, I guess, almost like a, a seal puller or something like that for something much bigger. You could see it's had wear. It's even got a little bow to it. Now, I doubt that bow was from the factory, but you never know. Sometimes, you know, or whatever, but a lot of times when tools were used, like, a certain way, you know, they didn't straighten it out because it kind of helps, or I just love this tool. So we're just going to clean this up right now. This is the tool that I I took to as soon as I opened up the box I saw this and said wow This thing's got some use on it. Somebody loved this tool and I know I will so let's get let's okay, clean about 20 minutes on the wire brush and we have the uh, paint removed um, I Now I'm looking at this bend. It's got kind of a compound bend So I don't think it was like that from the factory. You see what I'm saying? so maybe we can do some straightening it to get this nice and because it will come back to the way. You see that bend there? You see the belly? Uh, let's see what we can do on the dake. We'll just get this to where we would think it would be from the factory. I don't think they would have put kind of a weird... They would have made a straight bend if they wanted it straight. And you can see here, this don't line up, you know? So let's straighten it out okay, on the dake. everybody's favorite. I got to tell you, this is one of my most favorite tools to play with down the shop. So let me show you the setup. Now we're going to use it. We have a steel plate here. I bought the steel round plate and I used that for the bottom base. So now let's put the that press. On. It's always good to have some kind of blocks, you know, steel blocks, wood blocks, all kinds of blocks, because that's what you tend to put the item is that you want to bend. So the first thing you want to do is you want to see about where the bow is. And, and it's about here somewhere. So we're going to put this over here like this. And, uh, and you want to separate it as much as you can, those two blocks, so that, you know, it will give it room to bend you don't want to have these blocks too close together because you have no place for that you know the metal to give so again metal will want to go back to its original form let's put some okay, pressure you see on. the bow now i'm holding the tip here just so it don't but look how that's going see see how it's coming down now and again we don't we, we want to see how springy this steel is so we'll just give it right now we only have a ton on there We'll bring it up and see it might be very springy and we'll take a look okay, at remember it. to check we look down the bar now we're looking down this way i'm trying to look through the camera lens to see what you can see let me flip it around here this makes it a little harder we'll have to go from this end but you can see we still have a little bend in the middle here you see it it's a little bit but that took quite a bit out and it was only a short one let's okay, do it okay we put it back in here i can't tell you how much fun this is now i'm just letting the weight of the handle drop down i'm not even really pushing anything so very little force is required to do this. But we're coming down here. Again, we have a hand here so it don't shoot out and across the room or hit you or something. Now you see we got a little reverse bend. We'll loosen up the pressure and take a look again. Okay, we'll take a look again and see how that's coming. Okay, we saw just a little bit of a bend down this end. We're going to bring it down just a little bit. And like I told you, metal wants to go back to its original shape. For some reason the molecules they want to realign themselves so 
Don't think you're doing the magic. The magic is in the metal. Okay, look how close we are. We're very close, but we do have to bring this point down a little bit. See this point here? We have to bring this down this way. Okay, this is a little more difficult of a bend, but we'll try and see if we can't get a little bit of a bend that way. And then, uh, you can see here, that's a tough one. Now, believe it or not, the human eye is very as acute at, uh, at seeing if something is straight or or off. But you could take a, a straight edge, a draw a line, and then you could have a comparison when you hold this up to it to see how you're doing. And just move, inch it up to the line or inch it down to the line. You can see we have a, a very acceptable uh, straightening of the bar now. You could see here, there's no bow either way. Uh, Looks very good. We took out the little tip and uh, wiped it. Now we'll just uh, figure out what kind of finish we're going to put on. We're going to take this, obviously, to shiny because it has some uh, hand. So I think some steel wool and oil. Steel wool and oil. Now I swear I had all intentions of just giving this a quick wipe down with some steel wool or Scotch Bride or something. But I, I tell you, the more I felt it, the more I said this needs to have the scalp corrected treatment. I just figured a little bit of uh, getting off that old finish and cleaning it up and working it back and forth, a little bit of polish. It just feels so much better in the hand. And and you know my favorite part. My favorite part of any restoration is you remember what it looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh, originally, I think the bar was all painted red and had the original forge lines, but you can see what we did here. Uh, this, this is a very thin uh facet so it was a little more difficult to do but it was a good challenge and we have it very nice it's a nice bar if anybody out there has ever used it the, the paint came out real nice because i oven baked it it looks uh, very similar to a almost like a powder coating when you do it uh, with the oven baking that's a regal red rust-oleum so very nice bar if anybody out there has used this or know what it's used for please let me know it uh it is back in service, something I'll be able okay, to Okay, so in closing, we got quite a bit done today. Special thanks to Lisa and Jimmy. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.